Hi, I'm Helena Fox and I'm the author of this book, How It Feels to Float. It's a book about a young woman called Biz, um, who's 16 years old and she's navigating quite a lot of things. Um, she has some really busy runaway thoughts. Um, she's doing year 11 so she's got a lot of schoolwork. Um, she's trying to keep her place in her friendship group and she's also trying to figure out her sexuality. On top of all of that, Biz is carrying the loss of her dad, who died when she was seven. Her life is semi-normal, other than the fact that her dad still comes to visit her. He floats at the end of her bed and tells her stories about her childhood. And in this way, she's kept her dad close, and that has sort of helped her manage her grief. But at some point in the stories, things start to unravel for Biz. She loses her friends and she also loses her connection with her dad and that plummets her into a very difficult, hard space. And the story um, then kind of evolves into an exploration of what happens when um, grief profoundly affects your mental health and how you can find your way out and through that hard space and into something that feels like hope and a future. And it's a story, it becomes a story about love and connection with friends and family and support. So I'd like to read to you from a couple of um, chapters because I have written this in some pretty short fragments. Um, so I thought I'd read to you from the opening chapter and then a chapter, I think it's um, number four and it's uh, just a little bit later in the story as she's going to school. So I'll start with... Chapter 1 At three in the morning when I can't sleep, the room ticks over in the dark and all I have for company is the rush of words coming up fast, like those racehorses you see on television, poor things. And when their hearts give out, they are, sh they are laid on the ground and shot dead behind a blue sheet. At 3 a.m. I think of hearts, I think of candy hearts and carved tree hearts and hummingbird hearts. I think of hearts in bodies and the rhythm inside us we don't get to choose. I lay my hand over mine. There it is. It beat beats, beat beat beats, skips a beat, beat beat, beat beat beats. A heart is a mystery and not a mystery. It hides under ribs, pumping blood. You can pull it out, hold it in your hand, squeeze. It wants what it wants. It can be made of gold, glass, stone. It can stop any time. People scratch hearts into benches, draw them onto fogged windows, tattoo them on their skin. Believe the story they tell themselves, that hearts are somehow bigger than muscle, that we are something more than an accidental arrangement of molecules, that we are pulled by a force greater than gravity, that love is anything more than a mess of nerve and impulse. Biz, a whisper, biz in the dark, biz in my room. I open my eyes and Dad's sitting on the edge of the bed. You need to stop, he says. What? I squint at him. He's blurry. The thinking, I can hear it when you breathe. Dad's wearing a grey sweatshirt. His hands are folded in his lap. He looks tired. You should sleep like you did when you were small, he says. He looks away, smiles. Your tiny fingers, tucked under your chin. There's a photo. Dad trails off. Yeah, Dad, I've seen it. The one of us in hospital, after you were born. Yeah, the one just after Mum got her new blood, and you fainted, and they gave you orange juice. The one where Mum's laughing up at the camera as I sleep in her arms. Yeah, I've seen it. Dad smiles again. He reaches across to touch me, but of course he can't. That photo has been on every fridge door in every house I've ever lived in. It sits under a plumbing company magnet and beside a clip holding year-old receipts Mum can't seem to throw away. The photo was taken an hour after I came bulleting out of Mum, so fast she had to have a transfusion. In the picture, I look like a slug and Dad looks flattened like he's seen a car accident. But Mum's face is bright, open, happy. 
All the other photos are in albums on our living room bookshelf, next to the non-working fireplace. The albums hold every picture of me Dad ever took until he died, and all the ones of me Mum took until smartphones came along and she stopped printing me onto paper. I'm now partly inside a frozen computer Mum keeps meaning to get fixed, and on an overcrowded iPhone she keeps meaning to download. And I'm in the photos friends have taken when I've let them, and the ones the twins have taken with their eyes since they were babies. I'm in the ocean I walk beside when I skip school, and in the clouds where I imagine myself sometimes. And I'm in the look on my friend Grace's face, a second after I kissed her, five seconds before she said she thought of me as a friend. I blink. Dad's gone again. The room is empty, but for me, my bed, my walls, my thoughts, my things. It's what, four in the morning? I have a physics test at eight. My ribs hurt. Behind them, my heart beat beats. Beat, beat, beats. Beat skips a beat. Beat, beat, beats. So now I'll read to you um, just a few pages on. Um, she's just We've just met her family and now she's heading to school on a very hot day. I live with mum and the twins in Wollongong, in a blue-clad house on a street wallpapered with trees. We moved here a couple of years ago after moving to a lot of other places. We're one and a half hours south of Sydney. The city is not too big, not too small. It's just right for now, says mum. The city sits beside the sea under an escarpment. The sea pushes at the shore, shoving under rocks and dunes and lovers. Craggy cliffs lean over us, trying to read what we've written. The city is long like a finger. It was a steel town once. There, that's the tour. When I was seven, Mum, Dad and I lived up north, near Queensland. In the Australian jungle, Mum likes to say. She says the mosquitoes were full on, but I don't remember them. I remember frogs, click clacking at night in the creek at the bottom of the hill. The house was wooden. It had stilts. The backyard was a steep tangle of eucalypts and ferns and figs and shrubs. You could see hills like women's boobs all around. I'd wake up and hear kookaburras. Light would come in through my curtainless windows and lift me out of bed. I'd run into mum and dad's room and jump on them to wake them up. I had a puppy. I called him Bumpy. Our street is flat now. It goes past the park where I walk the dog, and he sniffs the shit left by other dogs. I can walk to school in 15 minutes, or I can walk straight past it and go to the sea. Or if I want to be a total rebel, I can go the opposite direction, and in 15 minutes end up in a rainforest, under a mountain, gathering leeches for my leech army. On the walk to school, the cicadas keep me company, they scream from one huge gum to another. I pass the community centre. I pass the park. I get to the end of the cul-de-sac and wait under the bleaching sun to cross the freeway. Traffic balls past. I can feel my skin frying. I can feel cancer pooling in my freckles. I can feel the tar melting under my feet as I scurry across the road. Past the freeway, there's a vet, a pub and a train station. Every day I have to cross the train tracks to get to school. Every time I think, what if the signals are wrong and a train comes out of the blue and hits me as I cross? A woman walked against the signal once. Not here, but close enough it may as well be here. She was in a rush, they said. She ignored the ringing bells, the dropping barrier. She got halfway and thought better of it. She turned back. The train came. Every time I cross the tracks, I think of her and try not to think of her. I've traced and retraced her last moments in my head. I've Googled her and I know the names of her family, the job she had, the music she listened to, and the last concert she saw before she died. I can feel the tightness of her skin when she saw the train and how sweat sprang up a moment before the train hit step and how our pupils widened step and turned my eyes to black step. 
and in that infinite molecular moment I can't remember if I meant to cross or have paused on the tracks and I'm waiting here. Hey, Biz. I turn my head. Dad's walking beside me, barefoot, in his running shorts and kiss t-shirt. Do you remember your first train ride? No, I don't remember that, Dad. It was a steam train. You were four. We went through a rainforest. We went really high up a mountain and visited a butterfly sanctuary. And you flapped around like a monarch. You were beautiful. Is that right, Dad? You should flap around. Try it, Biz. It'll shake off the frets. I look down. I'm over the train tracks and past the station. I'm on the path. It opens in front of me, green grass on both sides, the sun beaming. I think of butterflies. I think of flying. Dad laughs. He's gone by the time I reach the school gate. Thanks so much for listening.